are happening in this our land of the brave. Everybody's wiling out, our leaders in particular, especially in parliament. Minister of Trade to Kerotwea, who has been called to task to explain why our financially challenged government is involved in a land deal in Angola, was seen using those controversial UOI pads donated to MPs by the Chinese in parliament to ogle women. Now, where must our youth learn morals if this is how the elders are behaving? Mm, 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 mm. On the subject of our parliament, our MPs once more became the ridicule of the country after, well, this. Yes, because Who would this, this don't young don't man? He must be moved. And please, I, I cannot, you can move me. Cannot be you can remove me. Tomorrow. Well, if 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 I he must be moved. If, if I'm exposed, out of yes, you will move me because I'm exposing the corrupt activity. No. You can. Sit down. No. Kwa, kwa. You all saw that, right? I asked the PDM's Vipwa Muharuka to give us some insight into exactly what transpired. The speaker, deputy speaker sitting there, like a lame duck, not being able to castigate the honorable member who is out of order, the honorable Kawana. In turn, she turns to me and says, I must sit down. So I said, no, please, let me continue with my, this is my reasoning, let me continue with my debate. Kawana must sit down. The speaker is not doing it. What should I do? I told Kawana to sit down. Sit so that I can continue talking. It's an important debate for the Namibian people. If it's not for you, for the youth, it is. Because we are not here to, 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 to enrich ourselves. We are here to charter a path to an equitable Namibia. So I wanted to continue with the debate. Unfortunately, it did not happen. Um, when I asked him to sit down, two other members of the ruling party stood up. But guess what the deputy speaker did? The deputy speaker kept looking at me. I must sit down. So I asked, why should I sit down? I have the floor. The Honorable Kawana stood on a point of order when another member was on a point of order, being uh, the Honorable Sioka, and then another ruling party member was on, was stood up on a point of order. There were three members of the ruling party who were standing on their feet. Three, at the very least. I don't know who was behind me. I think behind me there was also one. In fact, the Honorable Mike Avekotora also in his commotion stood up at this point. There were three members, or at least three members of the House that was standing up. The Honorable Deputy Speaker was looking at me to sit down. So what she then did is she called the sergeant at arms to come and remove me from the house. Well, for the sake of the voice of the Namibian youth, the voice of the Namibians, I, I was free to be arrested. Well, because it appears that the only time government would accept any conversation is when you speak in their favor. But when you speak the truth, that must be castigated. So I was free to be arrested. And the sergeant at arms, unfortunately, or fortunately, I, I, was, I looked at him. He was baffled. Because he, I'm sure he also thought, what did this guy do wrong for me to remove him? And only when the sergeant at arms refused to heed to her demand to remove me, did she say, I'm closing parliament. I will attend this house. Yes, attend the house. I will attend this house. Thank you. She shouldn't have. She should have indicated, controlled the SWAPO members, cabinet members, and let me continue. I set up an appointment to meet with the deputy speaker, Lloyd Kasingo, and all I got was... <coughs> the popular democratic movements of Ipua Muharukwa expressed dissatisfaction with the manner in which opposition parties are treated in parliament, particularly by the speaker, Peter Kachavivi. The Speaker of the National Assembly, being the, the Honorable Peter Kachaviri, is a biased speaker. Let's go and look at the record. When has he, we have been there for three years now, three and a half years, has he ever told any member of the cabinet to retract anything or to withdraw anything or called a member of cabinet to order? Never. But ask me, how many times has he asked opposition members to withdraw? The National Assembly have to come, has to come to the aid of the Namibian people because the Speaker cannot rise. Because the Speaker is too timid, he is too fearful of cabinet. That is the problem. The Speaker of the National Assembly is a danger to our democracy. That, that, that is the root cause of the problem, the Speaker. I asked the PDM's Vipwa Muharukwa what he as an opposition member can do about the suppression that they feel in Parliament. Well... I will con 
continue to want to debate. I happen to view myself as a person that is very respectful. I am actually very respectful. In fact, even when I have, when I have had a, 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 a debate with someone, a robust debate, debate with someone, perhaps even sometimes charged or filled with emotion, I still continue to speak with the person, love with the person after the debate. Uh, unfortunately, that, that is just my character. Um, so I would, I have not disrespected anyone. I do not intend to disrespect anyone. But the truth I shall talk, even if it means death or jail. That's what I swore to the Namibian people. That's what my party swore to the Namibian people when it brought us as a group of MPs that we shall represent the interest of the Namibian people, even if it means death. Up next, it's Dudley Vile's cartoon. Sheriff Sean Modia of the Namibian Marshall Rangers found himself on the wrong side of the woke youth when he posted rather innocently to my mind this clip expressing his concern for the repercussions of copper wire theft in serious areas. Check this out. Okay. I'm standing here at the back of UNAM across the Western Bypass. Last night there was a power outage in uh, Simba Basia Academia Pioneers Park and serious uh, areas were affected by a power break. These poor guys are now busy uh, repairing the wires so that uh, things can be sorted out. Sam, brother man, could not have foreseen what was coming his way. Job Amupanda himself took offense to this post. Principally and ideologically, uh, that whole notion that there are serious areas. In fact, at the core of apartheid legislation when you look and study what is called the Group Areas Act, yeah, the Group Areas Act or the Bantu Stands, hmm? it had a, a particular logic in terms of the order of importance. So it's unacceptable for anybody uh, to pro propagate a view that there is what is called serious area. There are no serious areas in our communities. So that's why we're saying that we, we take serious offense. I take serious exception to anybody who is projecting some sort of notion of a serious area. Every, so we operate from, from, from a human-centered perspective. I don't care who you are. I don't care whether you, 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 you are what. Because this is a general problem. Our people here, the poor people are suffering from a serious onslaught. Every day they are insulted by politicians. They are insulted by anybody. So and that culture is going, it continues like that. So I respond to say that there are no serious areas. In fact, it's very idiotic to think that it's a national or, or an issue that affects the entire town. Because th for 365 days, our people in the informal settlement, they spend the, without water and electricity, we are in those communities every day. So we cannot be in public discourse and accept somebody to say that there are some serious areas. So Sean also got into his feelings and decided to shut down this Malema rhetoric. It seems to me he assumed and therefore also jumped to conclusions and therefore decided he was going to use this for his own personal uh, agenda to discriminate not only against me but whites in general and according to his writings elite black people. So I was offended by this, especially a man that uh, is involved in the community, is com involved in the country, has done so much against discrimination, even since a child, and uh, it was an insult to me. I decided on behalf of myself, for my own dignity and for the principle of it, to open a case against him and also for the nation in general because discrimination cannot be allowed in this country. Uh, we're an independent country of multiracial, multicolors, multicultures and we need to find solutions as a nation. 
and this is setting a very bad example for our children and for generations to come. Job, however, remains unconcerned and shed some light on the real issues at play here. What case? Ah, it's a, I'm only engaging with his views and the, the, the propaganda narrative to be able so that other whites that are in his circle can understand that tomorrow, don't just go around and telling people that because Kleine Kupe is disturbed is a serious area. You see, crime is crime, no matter who it affects. Bad service is bad service. It shouldn't be a concern because Kleine Kupe doesn't, doesn't have electricity. It shouldn't. And it should not become our emergency. In fact, and I go further and say that, you see, it's very idiotic to think like that. It's very idiotic to think like that. But where is this guy's mindset coming from? It's coming from institutional uh, makeup in our country. Because you see, if there are potholes in Kleine Kupe, they are going to be fixed within a day. But there are permanent potholes in, 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 in Okuriangava. They are permanent. Go to Evelyn Street. So the, those white areas, that is why uh, in 2014 we went to occupy land in Kleine Kupe. If we could have gone to occupy land in, 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 uh, in Kohanja Park, nobody could have said anything. Because we occupied land in Kleine Kupe, we were disturbing the privilege that white people enjoy. So it becomes a concern. And that's what principally we are opposed to it. That whole logic of you cannot occupy land in a serious area. Sean believes that Job must be made an example of and looks forward to debating the issue with him. But Job ain't got time for that. He could have got hold of me. I'm sure there are ways that he could have got hold of me. And uh, as a good leader, he should have privately spoken to me and got clarification. Then I also said to, gave him the opportunity to apologize to me for what he said and calling me an idiot in big expressions. And then uh, he ignored my request and they, I also private messaged him first because I thought, well, as men, we must discuss this thing not in public platforms. I'm a public figure, he's a public figure. So we should do this diplomatically. This is a problem with, the, with, with, with some of these crybabies. When you participate in public discourse, you must be prepared that there are people like AR activists who are going to confront you. You don't participate in public discourse, then when you get saved, you go, oh no, oh, I'm going to have a case, I'm defamed. Because for the first time in his life, he had never seen a lot of young people who are asking him critical questions. Because he made a mistake by participating in a debate. So he's there participating in the discussion. And he's been saved nicely. Namibians lost their minds after seeing this post by self-made want to change your life for the better too forex trader Michael Amushalelo recently. Check this out. I've seen this guy ridiculed and praised with equal measure, but after seeing that, I had to speak to the guy and find out what's going on in click. person saw me and said, hey, aren't you that guy who's always making those money phone calls. And I said, yeah, I'm that guy. Oh, please give me money. I was like, okay, here's 20,000. And the guy was willing to accept the 20,000, but immediately as soon as I said, join Illuminati, then this guy got scared. So that was pretty much just the stunt to try and see the level of understanding of people. So just because now I said Illuminati, this guy all of a sudden didn't want to accept the 20,000 that I was offering him. And then from there on, I said, okay, let me go on a social experiment. How many people will pass by this opportunity? And clearly everyone passed by this opportunity. Just on the basis of hearing the word Illuminati. As a nation, we should stop blowing things out of proportion. Because I've, I've, I've seen how the video has gone viral. Like literally everyone is taking out of proportion. I now understand there's apparently a group that if you, if, you, if you just open that group, then unfortunately the Illuminati has captured you just by virtue of opening that group. So let's be open-minded. Michael Amusharello has published a motivational book and clearly has some, although not unique, interesting philosophies, which he shared with It's a Wrap. The good part that I love about religion is that religion, first of all, creates fear in people. Fear not to question the unknown. 
We never ask. That's, that's the one thing religion teaches us. Do not question. Just obey. How do you just obey something without questioning, even if you can see that, wow, this, is, this doesn't seem logically right for me. They just say, don't worry. There's a higher power. There's a greater power. Just do as you're told. Sell your house. Bring the money to the house of the Lord. We'll pray over your money and the demons will disappear. So this is the kind of religion people believe in today. And they feel that that religion is right. But as soon as you mention a word like Illuminati, then they will start calling you, you are the devil himself, you are the devil's son, he has lost it. I then asked Michael why if he's so determined to lift these people out of darkness, he doesn't give these lessons for free. Well, it takes my time. And unfortunately, somebody needs to pay for that. So I cannot be sitting here the whole day training people, following up with queries, and I do not get what, what's in it for me. So just like doctors do not operate people for free, nothing is for mahala. And that's the one thing that as Africans we need to start doing away with. Nothing is for free. If you want something, you need to put in something to gain out something. So the, 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 the mentality of wanting everything for free is also part of the reason why we as Africans are not progressing as well. Because we always get free aid from the West. But is it truly free aid? No. It comes at the expense of what? Our natural resources and the exploitation of our people. And now for our public service announcement. NAMCO offers 13 tertiary level education programs. The certificate programs include education for development, local government studies, community-based work with children and youth, business management and entrepreneurship and early childhood development. The diploma programs include education for development, youth development work or early childhood and pre-primary education, and the degree program consists of a Bachelor of Arts in Youth Development work. NAMCOL also introduced two new programs, a diploma in business and entrepreneurship, as well as a postgraduate diploma in open school operations and management. I spoke to three students currently building on their knowledge at NAMCOL. Check this out. I have heard of NAMCOL several times those years, and information at first was not yet really clear because it was regarded as NAMCOL is just for the school dropped out. Then I came across to a leaflet. I read some of the information there, then it says no. You can uh, enroll at NAMCOL for the tertiary programs. Then I scroll around them. I see one course called Diploma in Education for Development. Then I decide that no, this one I can take it up. Just through that, I came across to the information. Then I was, I, I applied, then I was enrolled in NAMCOL. The application process, it was not that much difficult because it, there, was, there, was, there were m many ways of getting there getting in through. You have to get the form, you apply, then you hand it in. Like for me, I have uh, I got access to internet, I download the form, then I have applied, I send it in, then I waited for for my my letter to be uh, to show that I'm admitted. First, I took gap years, and then I decided, why don't I study something? So I went to a college, but then the fees was just out of my range. So I decided, okay, let me lay back again. In the beginning of the year, I heard about this program. It was all over WhatsApp and all over every social media platform. So I decided, okay, since they say it's $3,000 uh, each term, so I decided, okay, fine. I am able to pay for my intuition fees myself finally. So I decided, let me try this out. And it has worked tremendously great with it. I was only having grade 12. A colleague of mine who is working at the Ministry of Gender Equality encouraged me to join NAMCO. I'm working for Commerce Regional Council, working with the politicians and since he said, but there is a course that you can join at NAM called Local Government Studies. So I said, sure, why not? So I will. So that's why I ended up at NAM Call, which was really very great. I started in 2014. Um, the first year I finished all six models. I was only, you know, having challenge in accounting. I did it for the second time and then I wanted to give up and Mrs. Uh, Carices, who is also employed here, encouraged me and says, just do it. So I passed that. I graduated in 2016, 2017. I will just relax again and then I said, but why don't I again? So I said, I come and find out the different courses they are offering. And then they said, but there is one that is having community development for people that is working with the community. And that's why I joined this program that I'm doing now currently, GED. So I'm a first year student and I'm enjoying it a lot. Application normally take place in, uh, from June to July. Then 
I was informed somewhere in October that next year I must come for registration of my course. Uh, you know when you register, all the materials are provided to you. They even give you the internet, uh, internet devices for you to, if you want to study online, then you can uh, as well do that. Everything just go, it, go, it goes away. Complete assignment, hand them in, vacation workshops. So the study is going very well. I'm a child lover. Okay, so I hanged out, the gap years I hanged out mostly with children. I went to a nursery school where there were a lot of children. It was a part-time work, so I fell in love with kids and then I thought this is a great opportunity for somebody like me. Because it's on distance and most of the time it's very hard to get tax and money to go every day to school and sometimes the classes are just too cloudy or too crowded or everything and Sometimes it's even at nine and it's late. So the previous school hours, it was kind of like seven, knocking off at seven. Then you're tired, you have to prepare for the next. So I thought, since I'm a responsible person, let me take distance. And that's how I ended up here. And I think distance is a great way for a student to study. It teaches one responsibility. If you work with community, you need to be academic, you need to upgrade yourself, you know, Sometimes people that is educated more than you come in your office and then you, you look like a fool sometimes. So you need to, to upgrade yourself and understand the people that you're working with. That's the first thing. And the other one is, as, uh, at my age, it's also to encourage the young ones, the youth. If I can do it, why not them? And for me, it was for my children to show them if I can get or if I can graduate at this age, they can also do it. Uh, I actually wanted to stop with this one, but then I said after 14 years, you know, then I'm turning 60, so I said, but then I cannot just be at home. There's another program that I can also do here. I can work with the young ones, I can offer after school classes and so on. So I will definitely take one of the programs that they are having here, which is early childhood development. I can also do that, so. Namco is the best institution ever. If everyone could just get the right information and learn to Namcol and just do what a person is supposed to do. Seriously, they will go far because at Namcol you are supported through your assignment, through vacation workshops, and yeah, it's just good. You study with your own time at your own pace. The coordinators are great. Like, there was this one time I lost my assignment and I called him up and I said, so I lost my assignment and it's really, really due and I really, really need it. And he said, OK, fine, just come be hand it in and then we'll see what we can do. And I got my assignments, I got my marks. So just the learner support part, when you call, they answer on time. When you send an email, they respond when they have time. And that's why I just love it. And it's so flexible. So it's for a flexible person like me. First of all, the location itself is very, very good. It, it, it's within the community for those ones that cannot afford taxi fees and so on. And it's easy for you to, to liaise with your, your Twitters, with your, uh, the officials of Namcol. So it's also smooth the way how we communicate. In our course, there's someone that they linked us with Mrs. Spreads, where you can just easily pick up your phone. You, you call her or you send the email. She will respond as fast as she can. I just want to graduate and be someone in future. You know we are talking of career growth. I should not just end there. Once I get this one, I should go one step further or more step further so that I further my education, I at least become someone. When I'm done here, I want to expand, actually it's a diploma, so I just want to expand my diploma to a degree and a master's in child psychology and all those things. First of all is the accessibility, secondly is the affordability. Um, there are institutions, the same programs where you have to pay 20 to 25,000 where I can just merely pay 7,400 for my course. So I would re really recommend them to join Namcol. And then it's also, I think it's the third recognized uh, institution. So I would recommend Namcol to any other student, also to my colleagues at work. Stay woke with It's A Wrap by subscribing to my YouTube page, It's A Wrap with Erica Gebhardt, and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for watching.